Chapter 24 Capacitance, Dielectrics, Electric Energy Storage Units of Chapter 24 include capacitors, determination of capacitance, capacitors in series and parallel, electric energy storage, dielectrics, molecular description of dielectrics. Section 1 Capacitors A capacitor consists of two conductors that are close but not touching. A capacitor has the ability to store the electric charge. Here in the bottom we have two configuration for capacitors. For part A we have two parallel flat plates conductors which are separated by distance D and for part B we have two layers of conductors which are rolled together and separated by an insulator and we will see later that the insulator helps with the increasing of the capacitance and increasing of the charge storage in the capacitance the parallel plate capacitors connected to battery to be charged as we can see in part a and in a circuit diagram which is represented in part b we represent a capacitor with two parallel lines of equal size and we show a capacitor with letter capital C. For the battery, we show one of the parallel plates smaller than the other representing the negative electrode of the battery and the other one as the positive electrode or the terminal of the battery and we represent it as a V, the representation of the electrical difference voltage of the battery. When a capacitor is connected to a battery, the charge on its plates is proportional to the voltage. So we have the charge accumulated in a capacitor Q is equal to a proportionality factor C times V, which is the voltage of a battery. And this proportionality constant, or C, is called the capacitance. The unit of capacitance is ferret F which is equal to 1 coulomb divided by volt. Okay, let's look at uh, rule number 4 from the book as an example. The charge on a capacitor increases by 15 microcoulomb when the, the voltage across it increases from 83 volt to 121 volts. What is the capacitance of the capacitor? So let's name them as Q1 and V1. As the initial charge and voltage and let's put q2 and v2 as the final charge and voltage okay and let's use equation 24-1 which is the relation between charge and the voltage as q is equal to c times v so if we use these conditions and say q1 is equal to cv1 and q2 is equal to cv2 we can solve this for c and we can say q2 minus q1 is equal to cv2 minus v1 let's plug in the numbers and solve it for c capacitance c is equal to Q2 minus Q1 divided by V2 minus V1 and we have 15 microcoulomb times the minus 6 coulomb divided by voltage is 121 minus 81 volts and that is equal to 3.947 10 to the minus 7 ferret and this is equal to almost 0.39 microfarad okay now let's look at another example problem number 16 from the book dry air will break down if the electric field exceeds about 3.0 times 10 to the power 6 volt per meter what amount of charge can be placed on an air gap capacitor if the area of each plate is 8.2 centimeters squared 
So here we have to assume that there is a uniform electric field between the capacitor plates. So we can simply say electric field is voltage divided by the gap separation. So we can solve it for the voltage is E times D. And we can use also equation 24-1 and 24-2 for the capacitance. So we have maximum charge that we can store in such a capacitance is capacitance C times V max that we can, we can obtain. And that is equal to epsilon naught A divided by D multiplied by E max times D, which simplifies the D cancels out. Uh, this is equal to epsilon naught A E max. A is the surface, epsilon naught is a constant, so maximum charge then is equal to 8.85 times 10 to the minus 12 farad per meter, that's another unit for epsilon naught, times 8.2 times 10 to the power minus 2. This is meter squared. Multiply by 3.0 times 10 to the power 6 volt per meter. Okay, if we simplify this, Q max is equal to 2.2 times 10 to the power minus 8 Coulomb. Section 3. Capacitors in series and parallel. Capacitors in parallel have the same voltage across each of them. The equivalent capacitor is one that stores the same charge when connected to the same battery. So here we have a demonstration of three capacitors at different capacitances, C1, C2, and C3. They contain different charges, charge capacitances of Q1, Q2, and Q3, but they are connected all from the right to a terminal B or the point B with voltage B and on the left they're connected to terminal A of the battery which represented with letter A. So it means that all of these capacitances they have the same voltage across the two terminals of them and the equivalent capacitor which can be replaced the whole three of them so we can say this diagram can be represented as a voltage AB and C equivalent sitting instead of all three capacitors in parallel. And capacitance C EQ is simply the sum of each of these capacitances in parallel. Here we have an example of three, but it can be extended in more than three capacitances or any number of capacitances in parallel. For a series configuration where the capacitors are connected together in series, all the capacitors in series configuration, they have the same charge. In this case, the equivalent capacitor has the same charge across the total voltage drop. Note that the formula is for the inverse of the capacitance and not the capacitance itself. In the bottom here, we will see a configuration of Three capacitors of C1, C2, and C3 capacitances are being connected in series. And they are connected to the batteries with ter from terminals A and B. And we have voltage drop of VAB between upper the left and the right of these capacitors. As we can see, connecting these capacitors to the battery will induce charge of plus Q on the left and we will have the same charge induced on different plates of these capacitances. Therefore, we will have an equivalent capacitance between these. So instead of all of these, we can have a battery connected to VAB is connected to the C equivalent and this is equal to 1 over C equivalent is equal to 1 over C1 plus 1 over C2 plus 1 over C3 
for the series configuration. Okay, now let's uh, consider problem number 30 from the book as an example. A 0.5 microfarad and 0.8 microfarad capacitor are connected in series to a 9 volt battery. Calculate A, the potential difference across each capacitor, and B, the charge on each. C, repeat part A and B, assuming the two capacitors are in parallel. So when we have these capacitors connected in series, so we have a battery, we have capacitor one, capacitor two, this is the battery VAB, this is point A, this is point B, this is capacitor one, capacitor two. As we know, if the capacitors are connected in series, we have equal charges. So we have the charge accumulated on capacitor 1 is equal to the charge accumulated on capacitor 2. And it's equal to equivalent charges. And this is equal to the C equivalent times V. So the C equivalent of these two in series is equal to 1 over C1 plus 1 over C2, everything inverse. So Q1 and equal to Q2 and Q total or equivalent of the whole thing is equal to 1 over C1 plus 1 over C2 inverse times the voltage. So we will have 1 over 0.5 times the minus 6 farad plus 1 over 0.8 times 10 to the minus 6 farad multiplied by 9 volts. Should be inverse, yes. So the total Q, Q1 equals to Q2, is equal to 2.769 times 2 to the power minus 6 coulomb. This is in series. And now the question is asking what's the voltage across each of them? So we will have V1 is equal to. Q1 divided by C1, and we'll have 2.769 times the 10 to the power minus 6 coulomb divided by capacitance of capacitor 1, which is 0.5 to the power minus 6 farad. That is equal to 5.538 volts. V2 is equal to Q2 divided by C2. The same charge or capacitance 2, but the capacitance is 0.8 microfarad. And that is less voltage, 3.461 volt, which is almost 3.5 volt. The other one is 5.5 volts. And as we can see, the summation of these voltages adds up. So we have 5. 0.5 volt across this one, 3.5 volt across this one, total adds up to 9 volt from the battery. Now let's consider the same scenario when the capacitors are connected in parallel. So we have battery connected to capacitor 1, connected to capacitor 2. So this is C1, this is C2, this is voltage which is equal to 9 volts. So when the capacitors are connected in parallel, we know that the same voltage of 9 volt is between each of these capacitances. So the voltage is equal. So we say V1 is equal to V2 is equal to VAB and is equal to 9 volts. So we can solve it for charges of capacitor 1. Q1 is equal to C1. V1, and this is equal to 0.5 uh, microfarad times 9 volt, and that gives us 4.5, 10 to the power minus 6 coulomb. And for cap capacitance 2, we have C2, V2, 0.8 times 10 to the minus 6 farad times 9 volts. 
and we will have 7.2 micro coulomb for capacitance 2. That concludes this problem. Section 4. Electric energy storage. A charge capacitor stores electric energy. The energy stored is equal to the work done to charge the capacitor. Electric energy U is equal to 1 half Q squared divided by C. And it's equal to 1 half capacitance C times V squared. Alternatively, we can say 1 half charge Q multiplied by electric difference V. The energy density defined as the energy per unit volume is the same no matter the origin of the electric field. So the energy density described as little u is equal to one half epsilon naught times electric field E squared. The sudden discharge of electric energy can be harmful or fatal. Capacitors can retain their charge indefinitely even when disconnected from a voltage source, and you should be very careful. Heart defibrillators use electric discharge to jumpstart the heart and can save lives. All right, let's look at problem number 42 from the book as an example. A parallel plate capacitor has fixed charges plus Q and minus Q. The separation of the plates is then halved. A. By what factor does the energy stored in the electric field change? And B. How much work must be done to decrease the separation of the plates from D to half D? The area of each plate is assumed to be constant as A. So for part A, we know that the charge is constant. Let's write it down here charge is constant therefore halving the separation increases the capacitance by twice or by a factor of two so we say the electric energy electric potential energy stored in Scenario 2 divided by scenario 1 is the charge stored squared divided by 2C2 two two divided by charge squared. The charge is not going to be changing divided by 2C1. As I said, the charges are equal, so they cancel out. One halves will cancel out, and we will have c1 divided by c2 and if we write down epsilon naught a divided by d epsilon naught a divided by instead of d we have half d and again epsilon naught a cancels out one over d cancels out and we'll have one over two in the denominator of the denominator so we will have one over 2. So the energy stored in the electric field will be halved. For part B, the work done is the change in the energy stored in the capacitance. So we should say work done is equal to the change in the stored energy. So the work done to move the plate together will be negative work since the plate will be naturally attract to each other, right? So we say U2 minus U1 is equal to half U minus U1 and it's equal to minus half u1. This is equal to minus half q squared divided by 2c1. 
that is equal to minus q squared divided by 4 epsilon naught a divided by d. And that simplifies to minus q squared d divided by 4 epsilon naught a. And that is the work needed to uh, decrease the pressure of the plate to half d. Section 5. Dielectrics. A dielectric is an insulator and is characterized by a dielectric constant k. Capacitance of the parallel plate capacitor filled with dielectric is increased by factor k and can be written as c equals to dielectric constant k multiplied by epsilon naught surface area a divided by the separation d. Using the dielectric constant, we define the permittivity epsilon as k times epsilon naught. Dielectric strength is the maximum field a dielectric can experience without breaking down. Here on the left, we have table 24.1, which shows dielectric constants at uh, shear for different materials. Uh, for the case of vacuum, which is constant k is 1, and we have epsilon equals epsilon naught when the k is 1 for case of vacuum, and it can be fairly equal to 1 for air, it is equal to 1.0006. It will be different for different materials. For example, it can go as large as 300 for a strontium titanate. Here we will have uh, experiments where we insert and remove a dielectric from a capacitor. In the first, the capacitor is connected to a battery, so the voltage remains constant. The capacitance increases as we insert the trick, and therefore the charge on the plates will be increased as well. So on the left, you'll see the capacitance is connected to the voltage V0, and we will have a charge accumulation of Q0 on each plate of the capacitor. When the capacitor is connected, still connected to the voltage, and we insert the dielectric, which is shown with this yellow material here, the amount of the charge accumulated on each plate will be increased by a factor of k. Therefore, the capacitance is increased compared to the case of without dielectric. So the C is equal to k times C0, which, is, which means that the capacitance has been multiplied by K. And in another experiment, we charge a capacitor, then disconnect it from the battery, and then insert the electric. In this case, the charge remains constant because we don't have any source of charges. We don't have any battery to provide more charges. Since, since the dielectric increases the capacitance, the potential across the capacitor drops. Here on the left, you will see the capacitor is connected to the battery without any dielectric. The capacitance is C0, Q0 divided by V0. If we disconnect it from the battery, as it is shown in the middle, the charges are constant, equal to Q0. The voltage is V0. But when we insert the dielectric, the voltage drops to V0 over K because the capacitance has been increased by a factor k. OK, let's look at problem number 58 as an example. Two different dielectrics each fill half the space between the plates of a parallel plate capacitor as shown in the figure below, figure 2430. Determine a formula for the capacitance in terms of K1, K2, the area A of the plates, and a separation D. And as a hint, can you consider the capacitor as two capacitors in series or in parallel? As we can see here, these two capacitors are connected to the same 
a voltage, it means that we can <clears throat> consider this as a parallel configuration where we have capacitor 1, capacitor 2, and these are connected to, can be connected to the same voltage if you want to connect them to the battery. So we say C1 and C2, capacitor 1, capacitor 2. So in this scenario, each parallel capacitor has half of the total area of the total original capacitor. So we have C total is equal to C1 plus C2, and we can call it K1 epsilon naught, half of the area with the same separation. K2 epsilon naught, again, half of the area, separation D. And it can be simplified as one half K1 plus K2, and the common factor is A epsilon naught A divided by D. So this is the total capacitance of this configuration. Section 6, molecular description of dielectrics. The molecules in a dielectric, when in an external electric field, tend to become oriented in a way that reduces the external field. Here in the left, we will see uh, two, two parallel plates forming the capacitor. They are forming the constant electric field. The lines of the field are demonstrated with red lines. Here we will see if we insert a dielectric in, into this capacitor, we will see that the external electric field and the charges on the plates will induce the dipole moments inside the dielectric and the charges will be separated from each other. So we will have plus and minus plus sides on the negatively charged plate and minus charges will be induced on the side toward the positively charged plate. Therefore, these orientation of the charges inside the dielectric will reduce the overall field, which is represented as E0, and we will have the internal field of the dielectric will be opposing the direction of the external field between the two plates, and the overall field will be reduced. This means that the electric field within the dielectric is less than it would be in air, allowing more charge to be stored for the same potential. This re reorientation of the molecules results in an induced charge. There is no net charge on the dielectric, but the charge is asymmetrically distributed. The magnitude of the induced charge depends on the dielectric constant. So we say the charge induced, Q induced, is equal to the total charge of each plate multiplied by 1 minus 1 over K. Summary of chapter 24. Capacitor is non-touching conductors carrying equal and opposite charge. The capacitance is a proportionality constant between the charge and voltage and is defined as Q over V. Capacitance of a parallel plate capacitor is equal to C equals Q over V and it's equal to epsilon times the surface area A divided by the separation between the plates of D. When the capacitors are connected in parallel, the equivalent capacitance is equal to the sum of each individual capacitances. While when the capacitors are connected in series, the inverse of the capacitance are connected and they are added together to give out the inverse of the capacitance. So 1 over C equal equivalent is equal to 1 over C1 plus 1 over C2 plus other capacitances. Energy density in electric field, little u, is equal to 1 half epsilon naught electric field squared. A dielectric is an insulator, and a dielectric constant gives ratio of total field to external field. For a parallel plate capacitor, 
C is equal to K times epsilon naught A divided by D.